flip, flop, flip, flop. This sound was comforting. They look like Greek sandals, and they are essential for dancing for hot. When I wore my black shoes with young children in Turkey, we talked to each other through play. Shoes are a rich subject. They're so personal and at the same time universal. Shoe Project members come from all over the world, which means we may be talking about the sandals worn for dancing in Brazil or the meaning of flip-flops in Nigeria. Worn by every Tom, Dick and Harry, they were universally accepted dress code no one questioned. It was a loose-fitting head-to-toe shroud, but it disguised one of the most oppressed creatures of God, an Afghan woman. It said that a natural ability to dance salsa runs in the blood of Cadenos. Here, I finally got my very first pair of flamenco shoes. Immigrants shatter their worlds to come here, often without much more than a pair of shoes. These stories should be part of our national conversation. Women newcomers are highly skilled with a lot to contribute. We want to see them take up larger roles in Canadian life. To do that, they need not just good, but excellent writing and speaking skills in English. I like to stand on solid ground and firmly belong to the place where I live because there must come a time when you stop being an immigrant and start to grow roots. Maybe all the changes in my outer appearance are a kind of compensation for what I lost by immigrating to this country. We work hard together, editing and polishing the words. We cry and we laugh too. Our members rehearse with voice and drama coaches so that by the night of our performance, we have bonded. <laughs> Shoe Project members credit the group with helping them succeed in Canada. Some publish, some go back to school or start a business. Our graduates stay involved with us, finding ways to reach out and help other women in their shoes.